right. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Welcome to Mother's Day 2024. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and ask all the mothers to stand at this moment. Yes. Yes. Let's give them a great big round of applause. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. Amen. Look at the moms in the room. Amen. My prayer for you today is that God would do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine. And y'all know y'all got some, imag some imaginations going on up in y'all head right now. Y'all have desires of your heart that are yet to come to pass. Y'all have many, many unanswered prayers that are yet to be manifested. And I declare and decree that this day, May 12th, 2024, that God would do more than you could ever imagine in your life. And that you would see exactly everything that God has placed in your heart. That he would give you the secret desire that he would blow your mind, that he would give you well-deserved honor, acknowledgement, and gifts. That there will be checks in the mail, that there'll be money on your cash app, that there'll be money in the bank. <laughs> that he would just blow your mind and that your heart, the ground of your heart would be open to receive everything that the Lord has for you. God fashioned you and formed you before the foundations of the world. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb and that everything that God has purposed you to do, that he has ordained for you to do, that you would do it in this lifetime, that it would not go to the grave. Amen. That it would not go to the grave. And I thank you, Lord, on this morning for these are your daughters. God, you called them by name. You ordained them. You set them apart for such a time as now. And that, Father, we love you on this morning. And we honor your presence. And we thank you, God, for allowing us to be graced in this year of 2024. And, God, you are not done with us yet. Not by four. He is not done with us yet. So mothers, give yourself a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I have, um, to all the mothers that were honored in the giveaways, congratulations. I know some of them were surprised. Surprise, surprise. Pastor Ken, he was supposed to be honoring according to the order of the service. He said, I got the mic, and I'm just going to go ahead and do it while I got the mic. Hi, Elder Garrett. <laughs> I was back there, now what are you doing? Now what are you doing? It's so funny. <laughs> I have a poem. Oh, I miss my mom. Today I need her. I would give anything to hear my voice again. And I know many of you who have, your moms who have gone on, you feel the same way do anything just to hear, just to spend one more day with her, to hear her say, Mary Ann, I'm proud of you, good job, or even act right, <laughs> just one more day, cherish what you have. It's 
one day you will not. That's for certain. Transition is for certain. We all will transition out of here. Back to our heavenly home. Back to the place whence we came from. So cherish it. So I have a poem. Let's see if I can get her. There she is. Amen. Mom, how did you find the energy to do all the things you did? <clears throat> to be a teacher, a nurse, and a counselor. To me, when I was a kid, how did you do it all, Mom? To be a chauffeur, a cook, and a friend? yet find time to be a playmate, I just can't comprehend. I see now it was love, Mom, that you may come whenever I call. Your inexhaustible love, Mom, and I thank you for it. This is a poem I found by Miss Johanna Fouch. I think I pronounced her name right. And in honor of my mom today, I would like to acknowledge my sister, Linda. She has become the mom of this family, y'all. <laughs> she is my big little sister. She has the same nurturing spirit that my mom has, that she has left in the earth. And Linda, I acknowledge you today on behalf of our wonderful mom, Willie Mae Esprit. Many of you remember her uh, when she, if you were a part of our ministry in the early years. She was gentle, she was kind, she was very loving. Uh, very seldom did she have a harsh word. She, all you had to do, all she had to do was, you know, give us those pair of eyes. And she, so she didn't have to do much talking. She just looked and we knew to straighten up. <laughs> those looks are long gone. Her loving spirit, when we erred, she never, never, never not showed us anger. She showed us love. Not that she was always pleased, but she was always loving. And I can thank her on today for imputing that same spirit into me. That though we all error, but what's greater, it is love. And so, Linda, on today, I have some flowers for you. If you want to stand, you don't have to come up. You can stand, and they're going to bring them to you. If somebody can get those for her. So, happy Mother's Day, little big sister. <laughs> I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I thank you on this morning. And, Father, I ask that you would speak to every person in this room, though this message is geared for us mothers, but God, it is a rhema a word, which I believe it is not gender specific, but it goes across the board. And so, Father, I accept you would see the ground of our hearts, Lord God, for we are ready and we are open and we are waiting for you to speak, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Today, the title, the title of my message is In the Waiting. What do you do in the waiting? And, you know, as moms, you know, uh, whether you ha are, are mothering small kids, elementary kids, junior high kids, uh, high school kids, college kids, or grown kids who now have their families, there are things that we are still 
waiting for, waiting for God to, whether it's an answered prayer, waiting for God to manifest a healing in a sick child, waiting for God to perform miracles you know, in a child, waiting for a wayward child to come back home. No matter where we find ourselves, we are in the waiting. And what do we do in the waiting while God is going to come and answer our prayers? Because one thing for certain as mothers, we have a, a manifested hope and that hope is that in the natural, that I don't care what it looks like, I am going to wait on the Lord. And what I see is what I do not believe in the waiting. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And so guess what? So it doesn't matter what it looks like, what we see. Guess what? I have a manifested Hope. I was talking to my mother-in-law just on yesterday, and that word came to me as she spoke, a manifested hope. And so hope, what is that? Hope, though we don't have yet what we're looking for, though we do not see it yet, I don't care what it is. Even if it's a child, we are a child waiting to graduate from college, though it's not yet seen, it is manifested. The hope of it is manifested. Somebody clap on that. Look, if you don't get anything else today, get manifested hope. And you go and you research that and you declare and you decree manifested hope. Amen. My scripture verse is none other than Isaiah 40 and 31. But those who wait for the Lord those who wait for the Lord who expect who look for and hope in him will gain new strength so if your strength seems like it is a little weak if it looks Sherilyn like now they called you cheer cheer Sherilyn she this this mother had to wait for God to manifest something in her life in the present and you don't give up and there were a body of believers praying for you and so her strength needed to be renewed God needed to give her a new strength because guess what old things are passed away even the strength even what the strength we had on yesterday we need a new strength for today what we had 10 years ago is just not working anymore. We need a new strength. So we need God to come in and renew us. Renew us in our spirit. Renew us in our mind. Renew us in our walk and our get up. Because some mornings, I know you just didn't feel like getting up. Mom. And everything could be all perfect. But you rise up at five. And you go down at nine. That's some long hours, sis. That's some long hours. I remember us living in Dallas when we had our two little itty bitty kids. They were not even two yet, both of them, of course. And so um, I would have to get up, Lord. Y'all know I'm a sleep girl. That's my hobby. But we would have to rise early in the morning. 4.30, I was up because my co-worker was picking me up at 6 o'clock. And I didn't get home until 8, 7, 8 o'clock. That was long. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, renew their strength. Renew their journey, Lord God. Renew their feet and their faith, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're making and you're causing us to have hinds feet, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will gain new strength and he will renew your power. Mm, mm, mm. How many need a renewed power on today? Look, I talk to many of you and we all need some renewed power on today. And so he will rise, he will cause you to rise up and you will renew your strength. God likens us and he fashions us 
as eagles. And as you see, as I get into the message, you're going to see, okay, I see why God causes us to be renewed like the eagle. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what one of them come and tell you. And look, mm, this day and time, moms, I feel sorry for y'all. I'm telling you. Because these children ain't got no filter. They don't have no filter. They will come out and tell you anything. And look, I always was, you know, when I had to tell my mama something, I fixed it up. Because I wasn't telling her, you know, what really, really happened. I ain't saying that. I'm going to find myself getting up off the floor. Not no more. They, they are, they're just, they're very open. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but who, you, your ears got to be ready. Lord. Ooh, help a sister out and a daddy. Help us out, Jesus. They will walk and will not grow tired. And so if you find yourself tired, you're not in a place to be renewed and to gain new power if you find yourself tired. And so in this moment, I tell you to run to the well that never runs dry, that never runs dry. The eagle carries the character of a mighty warrior. Okay, and so, like I said, this message is across the board, it's for all of us, but today we're focusing on moms. So mom, every time I hear something that sounds like that, ooh, I need that, you can clap, you can shout, you can dance, I don't care what you do, but you better make some noise if it resonates in your spirit, because guess what? The enemy wants to keep you muted, and no more will he keep you muted at all. Not today, and in this place, you don't need to be muted. You can shout, and you can say, I receive it in Jesus' name. The eagle carries the carrier of a mighty warrior, and at the same time, it is the protecting fatherly manifestation of God. What is a mighty warrior? A warrior is a beloved son or daughter with a settled heart who is then trained and equipped to engage in life and death battles. And look, when I, when I was reading this here, life and death, the death is the, is the enemy. The death is depression. The death is ADHD. The death is anxiety. The death is uh, procrastination. The death is dishonor. The death is discouragement. You know, all our kids, our kids are facing these things at a young age. I heard a child, I heard a mother say her child at seven years old have anxiety. What do you have anxiety for? It's, a, it's an attack from the enemy. And moms, you better rise up and pay attention to your children because the enemy wants to attack them from the womb, from the womb from the womb and so when they come out the moment let me even say this thank you holy spirit even in birth even in birth the enemy is trying to plant things because remember the bible says we're born in sin shaped in iniquity so that is already in the word but mom and dad I, you better decree and you better declare the moment the moment that woman you find out she conceived, and then the moment she goes in labor, because guess what? A lot of things happen in labor, but you know what? Not no more, because moms, you are well equipped, and in this moment, you are being renewed, and your power is being restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in life and death, battles that are continually going on in him and around him, it signifies inspiration, the character of an eagle, release from bondage, victory, longevity, speed, pride, and royalty. 
guess what? Who got longevity in here other than moms? A mom. A mom got longevity because she the one that get up early and she the one to go to bed late. <laughs> yes, she does. Hats off to your dads if you're the ones raising your, your children. If you are raising your kids without their mom, hats off to you. And I applaud you even now. I applaud you. Because we have many of those these days. And I want you to know that we recognize you and we see you. If that is you listening in online, we see you. Here's what you possess, mothers. Eagles are mentioned in the Bible as being admired. So you are admired for your swiftness, your great physical power. Check this out. So how many moms can carry a baby on one hip and a clothes basket on the other one? Come on, girls, let me hear you make some noise. How many of you can carry that baby on one hip, your purse on the shoulder, the backpack on your shoulder? You're putting up the pot because somebody left it on the stove last night, and you're opening the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you make some noise if that's you. <laughs> yeah, Lord. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Great physical power. Don't ever look at yourself any less. Look at yourself, moms and women, because guess what? Even if you don't have any kids, you're mothering them those eggs in your ovaries. All right? So don't look at yourself, yourself any less than what I'm calling you today. And their endurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to shout out my mother-in-law. She's uh, 83 years old this year, last month. Mother Mary says, I'm no typical 83-year-old woman, just like that, attitude and all. She says, I'm not your normal 83-year-old mom. <laughs> the woman is still mothering the 61-year-old man. something year old daughter <laughs> so we have the spirit of endurance as long as we have breath in our lungs and a sound mind we will mother our kids from the moment we find out that we were carrying them in our womb until either they go or we go we will mother them yes we will we will give them what nobody else would amen Yes, we will. We will go for broke for our children. Yes, we will. I don't care how many pennies we don't have. We gonna make sure they have. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We will, if necessary, we will give them the clothes off of our back. Our last meal, how many times a mother didn't eat because she made sure her child had food. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Tight, but it's right. Shata. <laughs> Eagles are one of four dimensions of creation, and they are a messenger of God. That's who God has likened us to. And they are a skilled predator. Mm. Y'all already know where I'm going. You come after my children. You coming after me. Right? 
eyes don't care who you is. I remember one time, <laughs> my wonderful husband, your great pastor, was disciplining my children. I barged in that room, and I say, Killer James, enough is enough. Mary, you better get out of here. But two minutes later, that brother walked out that room. Not even two minutes. I think it was two seconds. You come after my children, you coming after me. And we become skilled predators. and a whole lot of other stuff we mounting up with. <laughs> oh my God. Our skills come by knowing that we are equipped. A warrior after God's heart prepares for the battle. Ephesians 6, 14 and 17. A warrior after God's heart guards her heart. Proverbs 4 and 23. A warrior after God's heart is a woman of integrity, Psalms 15, 1 to 5. A warrior after God's heart is a woman of authenticity, 1 Peter 2, 8 and 9. We are skilled warriors when we learn how to tap into the spirit of God and when we feast on his word, which grows our faith. Faith in the word is vital. We must believe the word before we see manifestation we must believe we must know that we are skilled and if we're not skilled let me tell you your situations will skill you they will skill you look you want to talk to wisdom you want to hear what wisdom has to say find a mother who has been through with her kids you want to find an anointed mother find a mother who has been through you know where she had to just pray just really pray and wait for the manifestation of the Lord. Find that mother and she will pray you through because she can relate to you. So she, cause she'll know the, so, the pain in your soul. She'll feel the, the, uh, the compassion. She'll have sympathy and empathy for you. So if you want to find a skilled warrior, find a mother who has older kids and has had to pray them off of drugs, out of jail, uh, from sickness and disease. Find that mother and you'll find a skilled warrior. Yes. Yes. How many skilled warriors we have in the house? How many skilled warriors? Guess what? It just says that you won the battle. The Bible says that, yes, in some places it says the, the battle does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. But let me tell you something. The, the children of Israelite, in order to get and uh, possess what was theirs, they had to go and fight. God opened the door. He led him into the land of milk and honey. He led him into Canaanite. He took him out of Egypt. He took him out of the darkness. He opened the Red Sea for them, and he caused them to walk over. But let me tell you, in order for them to go and possess the land, they had to go and fight. But when they did, God had already, the battle was fixed. The fight was won. The war was won. Because guess what? We know what the end of the book says. And it says we win. And the Bible says not by might, not by power, but my spirit is going to do it in the name of Jesus. My spirit, my spirit is going to do it. So you will go into this land of milk and honey. Mothers, you will possess everything that God has promised, not only you, but your children. You will, because the Bible says the seed of the righteous, they are blessed. They are blessed. The fruit of your womb, it is blessed. Woo. Amen. 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 Okay, I want to give you some seven characteristics of an eagle. I said I was going to let you out at 1130, but it ain't my fault. It was everybody that came before me. <laughs> K-1, 
Characteristics of an eagle. Eagles fly alone at high altitude. So listen, when they go low, we go high. If somebody trying to do a low blow on you, baby, let them do it. Let them do it. We go high. We go high. Because down here, you know, we was talking yesterday about bottom feeders. Mother Mary, what do you like? Catfish or salmon? She say, oh, I don't like salmon. Sean says, but mama is good for you. She say, I know, but I don't like it. I don't necessarily care for catfish because it's a bottom eater. We don't eat from the bottom. We don't deal with stuff in the bottom. We don't deal with gossip. We don't deal with craziness. When they go low, we go, we go high. Because eagles fly high and they fly alone. Don't feel like, I don't have no friends, nobody praying for me. You'd be surprised who's praying for you. Pastor Ken used to say, I want a mentor. God finally said, I'm going to make you one. Guess what? You want an intercessor in your life? Okay, and you don't see him? Let him make you one. Let him make you an intercessor. Eagles are tenacious. Oh, I kind of skipped. I'm sorry. Eagles have vision. Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thy shall go, and I will guide thee with my eye. Amen. Eagles are fearless, and they never surrender to the size or strength of its prey. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? We never surrender to depression. And I know it's a real thing, but you got to fight your way through it. Because if you don't fight your way through it, somebody's coming up behind you. And depression is a generational curse. And we, so we never surrender to the size, to the strength or the size of our prey. We never surrender to a child trying to talk back to you. And this day and time, they want to explain their self out. And then you get these really strong kids. I know y'all got them, because I got them. And they want to have the last word. Wait, what? The last word? What I said was an open and ended sentence. It don't need nothing on the back side of it. It has a period on it. submitting and submitting to that one of my little grandbabies he's so strong hit no I got four of them I forgot like that amen <laughs> they are tenacious eagles never eat dead things so we don't never feast off on gossip because it's dead we don't never operate out with a malicious heart because it's dead things we don't do that. Eagles prepare for training. And so, moms, if sometimes you feel like, why I keep going through this? You're, you're, you're in training. You're, you're in training. And God is raising you up. Maybe not your kids. Maybe your kids are great. Because, you know, we got, there are, my kids are wonderful. I don't know about y'all kids. I got some great kids. Everybody, we all got some great kids right? But there may be a mother. It may not even be a mother in here, but there could be a mother who just don't know, you know, what to do. So if we go through the training, we can help that mother. And look, hey, sis, look, I was, I, this is what I did when I was going through. So let me teach you. Let me train you. Eagles possess vitality. We don't get tired. Mother Mary, are you tired? No, we don't get tired. We don't get tired of mothering our kids. We do not get tired. 
and some of y'all mothering y'all husbands. I know y'all are. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Because fact of the matter is, if you're doing that, he's seen something beautiful in his mother. He experienced a great nurturing spirit in his mother. And naturally, he would pick a wife like unto her. Naturally. Naturally. Naturally, he would do that. Amen. Bless your sister. And thank you for blessing me. <laughs> Multiply God back to her. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 40 and 29 says, He gives strength to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases power. Biblical waiting is not a passive activity, but is demonstrated by active and consistently depending on and the obedience to God, not wavering to or fro, but standing firm, not being moved by what we see, but being obedient to the word in what God says that he, what he says he's going to do in your kids, through your kids, and for your kids. So that's why I prayed in the beginning that God would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask, you could ever think, or you can imagine, not only in your life, but in your kids. Because he, his word has to come to pass. And you know what? He wants us to develop this boldness, moms. This boldness when we approach his throne. His word is, has life in it. And so we have to believe that his word is true and that he is a man, he's not a man, that he is a God that will not lie and that his word will not return void. We have to believe that no matter what we see, no matter what we see. We must be planted like trees by the rivers of living waters. It is a life source, which is where we gain the strength. You know, God does liken us also to oak trees. Oak trees, if you know oak trees in this area, um, they can last a very, very, very long time. Their roots, they're just, you know, they're just growing, always growing. And they're looking for water. They're tapping into water. So he likened us to trees. And what he's saying in that, what I'm getting, what he's saying in that is, moms, let your roots, your roots grow deep. So you can tap into the living waters so that you can have longevity, that you can have endurance, so that you can have swiftness and you can have vitality. You know, um, I was talking about my husband. He looks so good. Somebody always telling him, Pastor Ken, you look great. And so we were talking about that and we firmly believe it's because of our uh, obedience to the word of God and our submission to the Spirit. I believe that. And so in God, He makes us look better than what we actually look. Because we all know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, I don't know where I might be. But I'm glad that today I can stand firm right where I am. Amen? Blessed are those who take refuge in Him. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, so do not fear for I am with your mom. You don't have to worry about nothing. You don't have to fear mom, I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Ooh, the I am. And whatever the, you need, the I am will give it to you. If you need strength, I am will give it to you. If you need peace, I am have it. If you need joy, I am have joy for you. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. 
Do not fear. I will help you. How do we fight? Okay. This is the exciting part. This is the part. Somebody say, uh oh. <laughs> we fight in praise. That's what we do. We fight in praise. We fight in prayer. And we stay postured before God, our Father, remembering what He has done for us and reflecting on the vision and what God told you in your heart when you was carrying that baby in your womb. You remember, oh, I'm pregnant. I can't believe. You couldn't wait till you found out if it was a boy or a girl. And you couldn't wait to find out whether it was boy or girl to name that child. And God has always been with you. And so every time, you know, we see something coming up against us or coming up against our kids, because we know if he's fighting against us, he's fighting against our kids. We go down in prayer and we rise up in praise. We rise up in praise to the Almighty Father, knowing that he is well able to do whatever we ask him to do according to his word. So you know what, moms? We don't have time for nothing else but to be walking in the spirit of the Lord, to be walking in righteousness and holiness, to come boldly before the throne. Why? Because God already have an answer for you. Whatever you're praying for, he have the answer. So what do you do? You rise up in prayer and in praise. And you say, God, I know you promised me this because this is the scripture you gave to me. Zachary name uh, means whom God remembers. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Never. Alexander means great. And God told me he would be great. God told me he would never forget Zachary. He would never forget him. He told me he would uh, always make Alex great. Caleb name remembers. It means uh, a bonus and warrior. And I remember. And so I'm calling God to his word on what he spoke to me about my kids. And I will never, never, never lay my position down. I will always be their prayer warrior. I will always be their intercessor. I will always be their fighter. You know, not with my fists, right? But if you need to. because you know we will. <laughs> you know we will. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> One time, they had this girl, I was in the fifth grade. They had this girl who wanted to fight me. My mama, I was like, and she come showed up on my street in front of my house, and I'm running in the back. I'm like crying and screaming because I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. What you want me to do? My mama said, girl, you better get on up here. You better get on up here and fight that girl. I'm like, no, mama, no, 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 no. You better get on up here. My mama didn't play, y'all. My mama didn't play. <laughs> but I will fight you if I have to in, in, in the spirit. In the spirit. <laughs> so moms, look, I feel you because, look, sometimes... Somebody came up against my grown child one time. And look, you know, I don't have a whole lot of words, but what I got is these pair of eyes. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head, Pastor Mike? <laughs> Why are you shaking? Anywho, whatever God told you, whatever he said, we got to rise up. We got to rise up. And though this is Mother's Day, but fathers, you are the priest. And her level of authority and fight is governed by your authority. And I know you got some wives and husbands in here. The husbands say, go get them, get them, mama, get them. But look, a husband will rise up if he see an attack on his family. 
He will. He will. So happy Mother's Day. And Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we're all, Father God, being renewed in our strength. Thank you for giving us renewed power on this morning, Father. Thank you for liking us unto eagles, O oh Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that when they go low, we go high, Father, in the name of Jesus. That way we can see, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for the, the uh, sight of an eagle, Lord God. I thank you for the characteristics of an eagle that you have bestowed on, upon us this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, have your way in their lives this week. Let this word, Lord God, resonate in their spirits. Let it ring loud in their hearing all week long, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, that the word that came forth on this morning, Father, that we will none forget it, Lord God, that it did not go on stony ground, Father. But, Father, you will take it, Lord God, and you will allow it to grow in us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that every mother, or if there's a mother in here that is feeling weary. But Father, your word says, Lord God, that I just read, that they that wait upon the Lord, that you shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and they will not faint, Father God. And God, because of your word, they will not grow weary, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. So, Father, we are the nurturers, Father. You gave us a nurturing spirit, Lord. But, God, we know it came from you, Father. So, Lord, we thank you for loving us in a special way on this morning. In the name of Jesus, bless their day. Bless their week. In Jesus' name. One announcement. Ladies, we are excited about our rainbow tea. Woo. And our speaker is Bishop Tanya Kearney. And if you was at the conference in October, she was here and she wrecked the house. Well, she will wreck it again. God has a word for you. He has a word for you. And he's going to do for you. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to allow you to go before kings. He's going to put the scepter out on you. And you, be, you will be able to declare and decree a thing and it will come to pass. I speak prophetically. You will be able to declare and decree a thing and it will come to pass. Join us September the 7th. Registration is open. You can register on the Church Center app. Or you can go to destinyoffaith.church and register there. Or you can meet us in the lobby. There's sweets for you in the lobby along with um, the photo booth. Thank you for joining us on today. Y'all have a wonderful week. And see you on Wednesday. Amen.